The insulin-dependent diabetic is a difficult patient to treat because they're more advanced in their disease and they struggle more with weight management and reaching the ADA target of an A1C less than 7%. Um, so it's a more challenging uh, group um, to, uh, to try to get to, the, to get to those goals. The trisemetide uh, clinical trial program goes from monotherapy uh, to patients on basal insulin. Uh, the trial that I presented was patients who were already on metformin and basal insulin, and uh, they had been diabetic for at least 13 years. Uh, and you saw a over 90% of these patients reaching the ADA target of less than 7%, uh, which, is, which is huge, unprecedented. Uh, in addition to that, the majority of patients also um, had significant weight loss. If we look at patients that achieved uh, greater than 5% weight loss um, on any dose of trisevatide, uh, that was achieved between 54 and 85%. So on the high dose of trisevatide at 15 milligrams once a week, 85% of those patients lost greater than 5% body weight. And we know that we're constantly struggling with our patients on insulin to lose weight. Of course, weight uh, causes uh, a worsening of the insulin resistance syndrome uh, and, uh, uh, again, the worsening of the disease in general. If we look at normalization of A1C defined as less than 5.7, that was achieved in the 10 milligram and 15 milligram dose between 48 and 62 percent of participants. Now, this is really unheard of in patients who are on basal insulin, who've been diabetic for over 13 years, okay, an average of 13 years, I should say. And we have 62 percent of these patients achieving normal glycemia at the high dose of trisepatide. So, I mean, this is uh, really a very powerful tool that I think will be uh, well used in, pra in, uh, in uh, practice. Um, you know, the biggest challenge, of course, is just getting the medication to our patients. Right, that's a great question. So, so remember in this trial, to be enrolled, you had to be on basal insulin at least 20 units a day. The average uh, dose was uh, 34 units, but the fasting sugar was not at target. So uh, those patients who enrolled had to have room to titrate that basal insulin. And it was a treat to target uh, titration uh, to reach a fasting glucose of 100 milligrams per deciliter. So to achieve those results, um, and actually in the, in the titrated insulin glargine arm, they actually didn't get to 100 milligrams per deciliter. They got to 123, which is actually very, very common in uh, titrated insulin arms. They almost never get down to uh, 100 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, however, all the trisepatide arms did achieve that between 94 and 101 milligrams per deciliter fasting. Uh, and also, when you look at the seven points from this uh, trial, you see, again, improvements in uh, the fasting sugar, but you see the loss of postprandial control with the titrated insulin glargine arm, and not only the improvements in fasting sugar with trisepatide at any dose, but also the postprandial control which we know that basal insulin doesn't really uh, do a great job in. And when you look at the um, actual doses, we saw an increase of titrated insulin glargine of 25 units, which is about 75% increase to achieve these results. And when you look at trisepatide, we saw an increase at the five milligram dose of about 4.4 units, which was, which was a 12% increase. Uh, the 10 milligram dose, we saw an increased need for insulin of 2.7 units per on average, which is about an 8% increase. And at the 15 milligram dose of trisepatide, we saw a decrease in the need of insulin uh, of, of uh, 3.8 units, which, which was an 11% decrease. So whenever we can decrease a medicine, especially insulin, we're of course excited because uh, insulin uh, increases the risk of hypoglycemia, uh, where these agents, of course, do not. So um, those were the changes in insulin needs in this trial.